creditor is the one who's going to loan the money out. The debtor is the one who's borrowing the money. They sign a contract, have a certain interest rate on the loan. And in the example you saw, it was a fixed interest rate. So that 5% didn't change over the year that the money was borrowed. So they pay back for sure a set amount when it's a fixed interest rate. In that situation, in any situation, the nominal interest rate, this phrase, the nominal interest rate, is the stated rate on the contract. That's the named interest rate. Whatever the named interest rate is, is not going to tell you, however, what the real gain to buying power that the creditor is going to get because they made the loan. It's not like at the end of the time of the loan, this creditor is guaranteed that they will gain 5% buying power because they have to take into account the effects of inflation. If there is inflation over the year, the prices of everything are going to be higher. So their gain in buying power will be diminished by however much the prices of things increase. So the real interest rate, once you subtract the rate of inflation from the nominal interest rate, it will give you the real interest rate. And this is the real gain in buying power that the creditor gains from making that loan. Or you can think of it as the real amount that the debtor has to pay. This equation comes up quite a bit in solving stuff for this unit, but also for, for future units. You want to remember this formula. That the real interest rate equals the nominal interest rate minus the rate of inflation. They made the contract in that other video. They made the contract with the 5% nominal interest rate, the stated interest rate on the contract. Because they expected inflation to be 2%, and therefore, they were expecting to earn 3% real buying power. This equation will explain, very simply, if you were asked on an essay to explain, you know, why the creditor is hurt and why the debtor gains because of high inflation, you could use this formula. And you could say that with high inflation, if you have a fixed interest rate of 5%, the nominal interest rate doesn't change. It's fixed. But if over the year there was high inflation, let's say 12% inflation, then it's going to work out that the real interest rate will be negative, meaning that the creditor will lose buying power because of that loan. And the creditor loses out in that situation. They lose buying power. The equation was that the real interest rate equals the nominal interest rate minus the rate of inflation. If you do a fixed interest rate, if you're the person who's lending the money, if you do a fixed interest rate, you can get hurt when there's unexpectedly high inflation. To protect yourself as a creditor, you can instead do something called a variable interest rate mortgage or a variable interest rate loan. And what that does, let's say you made a contract and the nominal interest rate was that 5% because you expected inflation to be 2%. And you want a real interest rate of 3%. This is what you want as the lender. You want a real gain in buying power. So what you can do instead of fixing the nominal rate, you fix your real interest rate. So that even if inflation were to go to 12%, the nominal rate is going to adjust to make it so that you always get your real interest rate. So what would the nominal rate then adjust to? Say that. 15. 15, yay. And the person who borrowed the money has to then pay, instead of when they sign the contract at 5%, they sign off that they understand it's an adjustable rate. It can change. It will be adjusted if there happens to be high inflation over the year. The interest rate will increase. Unfortunately, 
not many people paid attention to economics class when they were in high school. And so many people in the United States got into these adjustable interest rate mortgages, loans on their houses, and were suddenly caught in a position where the interest rate on the loan increased considerably and they suddenly couldn't afford to pay their loan payments anymore and they lost their houses to the banks. The banks will confiscate your house if you can't pay the payments on the house. So they lost their house and that's why there's so many houses in foreclosure right now in the United States. So people sometimes wonder, well, why would anyone get into an adjustable rate? Because the bank will say to you, we'll give you a 5% fixed rate or we'll give you a 3% adjustable rate. People say, well, 3% is lower. I'll take the 3% adjustable rate, right? And they don't take into account that their income, what they get paid, better be adjustable with inflation also. You better be able to go into your boss and argue that, oh, CPI has increased by this much, and the interest rate on my loan for my house is going to in increase also, so you need to pay me more so I can afford my mortgage payments. Right? You guys got that? So be careful. Um, this lady's got a nominal income of $1,000 a month. Nominal in name. That's the number amount. The real income that she has is all the stuff that she purchases with that income. If there is inflation, the prices of all this stuff increase. And if her nominal income doesn't change, then she's not going to be able to buy as much stuff. You like that? <laughs> right? Before she could buy that much. Now she can only buy this much. <laughs> because the price of all that stuff is higher. Another formula that's very similar to the last formula we just did with the a real interest rate and the nominal interest rate. Here is the percentage change in your real income equals the percentage change in your nominal income minus the rate of inflation. If your boss calls you in and says, wow, you've been doing such a fantastic job for us. We really like you. We want to give you a raise. And they give you an 8% raise that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get an 8% increase in buying power. You have to compare that to what inflation has done. If there's been 5% inflation, you're only gaining a 3% increase in real income. A 3% increase in the ability to buy more stuff. If your boss calls you in and says, hey, you've been doing such a fantastic job. We want to give you a raise. We're going to give you a 2% raise but there's been 5% inflation, then you, you need to have a little economics lesson with your boss <laughs> and say, actually the CPI has increased by 5%. So the goods and services that I tend to buy are 5% higher. You're only giving me a 2% raise. I'm actually losing in buying power. So, oh here, like if they give you an 8% raise and there's 8% inflation, then they actually haven't given you any increase in your real income. It's important as a worker to keep track of what's happening to the rate of inflation, to what's happening especially to CPI, because that's telling you what's happening to the prices of consumer goods, of the things you buy. And you need to compare that always to the income increases that you're getting from your workplace. The purchasing power is your power to purchase goods and services. If there's inflation, and your nominal income doesn't change, then you will lose purchasing power. You won't be able to buy as much stuff. This is also true if there is a higher rate of inflation than the amount that your nominal income increases by. Even if your nominal income increases, if the rate of inflation is higher, you will still lose purchasing power. And conversely, even if you've had no change in your nominal income, if the boss hasn't given you any raise, but you've had deflation in the economy, then you will gain purchasing power. It's like you got a raise, but you didn't have any change in your nominal income. This is a, a doubling time rule. Did we go over this before in the class? Yeah? 
So just a refresher that they use this to talk about how long is it going to take for prices to double. It gives us a rough guide on how long will it take for prices to double in the economy. And if every year you have pretty much a steady amount of inflation, prices rising at a certain annual rate, then you can figure out how long it will take for prices to double. And the idea is that you take 70 divided by whatever the annual rate of inflation is, and the number that pops out is going to be how many years it will take for the prices to double. So if you have a 2% annual rate of inflation, 2% annual rate of inflation, how long will it take for prices to double? How many years? Very good, Hayden. Is this recording? <laughs>